What's up, nerds? Yes, it's true, you can get paid to go to school. And I'm sure some of you already know the answer to this, but even so, I hope to teach you a thing or two that may help in your academic career, or even make you consider going back to school. So stick with me here. If it's your first time here, my name is Dara Tringali, I'm 22 years old and a physics PhD student at the University of Colorado Boulder, and I wanna teach you about the amazing world of research, and if you want, even help you get involved. The idea for this video came to me months ago actually. At the time I was teaching an experimental physics class and in between two of my classes, I decided to walk over to the classroom next to me where my friend was actively teaching. While I was there to call him ugly or stupid, I don't know, probably both, I ended up chatting with some of the students in the class. After me showing them I could do this, cool right? One of them eventually asked me why I wanted to pursue a PhD. And I basically told him two things. Number one, I really like solving cool research problems. But number two, that I knew I at least wanted to get my master's, so by doing a PhD, I not only got paid to go to school, but I also got my master's for free along the way. And his reaction was exactly why I decided to make a video about this, and I hope that was news to some of you too, because he had no clue that I got paid to go to school, or that PhD students still get their masters. So I want to talk to you all today about what you might not know about a PhD. Interlude! People, are you kidding me? A thousand subs in three videos? That was not my plan. I was supposed to be yelling into the academic void for months before anyone noticed, but I guess here we are. Whether you're here for the physics, the academic struggle, or just to witness my slow descent into research chaos, I appreciate you. Seriously. The fact that so many of you decided, yeah, let's see where this goes, is both exciting and mildly concerning. More physics, more bad jokes, and probably more moments of me rethinking my life choices coming soon, so stay tuned. All right, so let's start with the basics. If you're a PhD student, especially in STEM, you're not just a student, you're an employee. Universities pay their PhD students through a combination of teaching assistantships, which are TAs, research assistantships, RAs, or fellowships. Last semester, I was funded as a TA, meaning that I was paid to teach classes, grade assignments, run lab sections, and answer students' emails at 3 a.m. when they said, hey, I have a quick question. Going into this semester, I transitioned to being an RA, which is what every student eventually wants to get to, and that's being paid to do research. If you're lucky, you also might get offered a fellowship in the first year or two even of your PhD, and that I think is basically free money where you get paid to do nothing, and it's kind of just like without the responsibilities of a bump, once again until you find an RA, and then you do the same thing as everyone else. Now what's the catch? Well, me and you aren't going to get rich doing this. What you're being paid is called a stipend, and they can vary a lot by school and program at the school. I would say they typically range between twenty dollars and $40,000 a year, and you get tuition paid on top of that. And while it might not seem like that much, for me, knowing that I want to be here anyways, it sure as hell beats paying tuition. Now getting paid is great, but there are a bunch of other benefits to doing a PhD program that I feel like a lot of people don't always talk about. For example, like I mentioned before, most PhD programs in the US will award you a master's along the way. Just to be clear on how that works, in the first two to two and a half years of your PhD, you're essentially doing everything that you need to get a master's. And then at the end of those two and a half years, if I wanted it, at least the way they told me I can do it, is I literally just walk into their main office and I sign a piece of paper and I have my master's that I can just keep doing my PhD. But now I got my master's. I think a very comforting bonus on top of this is that at the end of those two years, let's say you decided you want to get your master's and you don't want to continue with the PhD. That's fine. They will give you your master's and you won't have to pay them back for it. So you didn't waste your time and get nothing out of it. And I'm not telling you to then now go get into a PhD program to get your master's and dip, but I think it's very comforting to know that you have that option because things change in people's lives over that time frame. Another benefit I'd say is that doing a PhD opens up a lot of doors to job opportunities that wouldn't otherwise be there. And for all of you who hate academia, it's fine. Industry loves PhDs and loves paying them a ton of money, so much so that most people end up going to work in industry. I want to make sure that's really clear to all of you because the amount of times that people come up to me and be like, oh, you're doing a PhD, so that means you want to teach and be a professor? And I'm like, no, not really right now. Like, maybe one day, but like, not really right now. So make sure you all know that doing a PhD, it's actually less common to go into academia and be a professor. It's more common to go to industry. Okay, this next benefit is probably my favorite one, and it's that you get to travel the world for free. Yes, you get to go to conferences, do collaborations in really cool places. I'm fortunate enough that in my undergrad, I got to go to a couple really cool places with my favorite definitely being my week trip to Las Vegas, where I presented research at a conference called APS or the American Physical Society. It's a physics one. And that 
was so formidable to my love for research in that I worked so hard to get this research done and get these results that I was able to present at this conference. And it felt like such an amazing reward for everything that I did. I also already got plans to go to Ottawa this summer, and I previously talked to a lab about maybe doing a winter over in Antarctica at some point. I don't know if that'll happen, but hey, I want to show you that that's possible, that you can do things like that. Yeah, you meet so many cool people during conferences, and that actually leads me to my last point, the friends you make during a PhD. I've already met so many brilliant, hilarious, and genuinely awesome people that I know I'll be stuck with the rest of my life in the best way possible. And actually, you know what? Let me, let me introduce you to one of them right now. All right, moving on. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and just glaze a PhD the whole time. Sometimes, a lot of the time, it feels as impossible and frustrating as trying to explain to my grandparents how to connect their computer to Wi-Fi over the phone. And it's a really long commitment if you want to see it all the way through, like five to seven years. But if you love your work and you enjoy solving challenging problems, it can be incredibly rewarding. And I guess I find it nice to know that if I ever decide this is not for me, I can always walk away with a master's and no new debt. So should you do a PhD? Well, if you like the idea of getting paid to solve problems and you enjoy learning, then maybe it's a good fit for you. But I'm going to be real with you. If you're trying to get a well-paying job right out of school, there are faster ways to get there. At least you know now I wasn't lying that there was a way to get paid to go to school. If you enjoyed the content, a like and subscribe would mean a lot. And throw any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them when I'm procrastinating everything else I have to do. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.